So hello everyone, I will be doing in this series chapter 4 algorithm and flow charts activities and then later it will be followed with the exam style questions. Uh, I'm doing it in the coming few days, the theory paper for, for AS level is going to start. So some of the students have been asking me to do those activities. So let's start with the first acti activity. Let me go to the first activity. The first activity is going to be activity 4a. The question says write an algorithm using if then which will input a number which will input a number so that's the first thing it's going to input a number and then we'll print out that number okay so it's going to input a number and they're going to be a result okay so the number that going to be output it will be multiplied by 8 if it is less than 3 that inputting number if it is less than 3 the result should be multiplied by 8 and if that number that we're inputting is between 3 and 5 then it needs to be multiplied by 4 otherwise if we're putting any other number except then these two uh, range then we're going to multiply it by 2 so how we're going to do this so let's start so this is the question so I'm going to tell you I'm going to divide it into three categories the first category which is less than 3 so 3 is not included here okay so it should be less than 3 that's 2 1 0 or it should be even minus okay so in this case it needs to be multiplied by 8 the second category it will be between 3 and 5 right now 3 and 5 will be included okay so whenever we use between means 3 is part of it and as well as 5 also part of it okay so when we're writing it by using algorithms or we're using larger than or less than here as symbols, we're going not to include those numbers. So if I am I want three to be included, I'm going to write it larger or uh, larger than two. Okay? I want five to be included, then it's going to be less than six. So in this case it needs to be multiplied by four. So here the numbers between uh, between 3 and 4 it will be 3 4 5 okay the last category it will be so if this is less than 3 okay and if this is 3 4 5 6 then what what is remaining remaining is whatever is larger than 6 so it is 6 and higher than 6 okay so 6 is not included here 6 will be included here that's why I said larger than 5 okay if it is any other number that is larger than 5, then I need to multiply it by 2. So this is basically the idea. You need to make it on a draft paper or on your paper at the exam time or whenever you're solving those algorithms. So let's write now, let's start to write the algorithm right now. So first thing is input the number. And here I want you to pay attention to the basic word. Sorry. I want you to pay attention to the capital words. Okay, at the end I'm going to uh, highlight those capital words. So let's start first writing it. So input the number. That's the number they asked us to input it right now. Okay, second thing we're going to use if. Here, also careful about the spaces. In this case, if it's really not needed to put space. If you want to put space, put it. You don't put want to put space in this sentence, no need to put it as well. Okay. So the first condition let's use it if the number is less than three what we said if it is less than three then multiply that number by eight how to write it properly number multiplied by eight whatever you're using here you need to use the same variable okay so multiply by eight whatever result you can put it in another variable okay that variable you can name it result you can name it total you can name it whatever you like but use something logical like result I don't prefer X I prefer using result but we can change it okay so the way of writing it will be number multiplied by 8 and notice this arrow which means equal so in algorithms usually it is like always the right side part it got saved into the left part okay after that, else, we're going to have two other options. So if the number is less than 6, okay, then it's going to be multiplied by 4. Else, right now, it's going to be multiplied by 2. So we got all the three options over here. Whenever we're going to input right now the number, it's going to go to 
one of those options. So it will select if it is less than 3, multiply it by 8. Else, if it is not less than 3, it will jump to check this condition if number is less than 6. Otherwise, if it is not, it will just detect that it is none of those options. It will directly jump to multiply it by 2. Okay, and right now let's start to close it back again. So end if, you will notice this end if should be for ending this. So make sure you're putting it with the same line. Use a ruler or use part of your paper or whatever you have at that time. Try to make sure the lines are equal. In this condition, we use then because we had two options, right? Then and else. So you can see then is one line. Here also this is on the same line. And then this is indented or sub-indented uh, part of the then and else. Okay. And this whole sentence is part of this big sentence over here, which is part of then, which is mainly for the main condition. Okay, let's carry on closing it. And last thing will be close with this if. Make sure it is with the same line. And finally, we're going to print out the result, which is coming from these variables that we're having. It should be stored in one of them. If you put this re as result, then you should repeat this here, here, and here as well. Okay? So those are the three conditions. And of course, this is not the only solution. You can write the solution in different logical ways as long as it is true and giving you the right number, the right way. Later, I will be recording the lessons. But right now, this is urgently. I'm doing it for the exams. Uh, so if you want to make sure of your answer, you can write it down on Python. Python is not required in ITS level. So you don't need to learn Python. But in case you know have some basic knowledge of Python, you can write it and you can check your answer. But it's not an emergency and it is not needed in the exam. Let's go for the next question. Next question of activity 4a. It's going to be write an algorithm. Write an algorithm using case and case. This is similar to if and then, but its uh, syntax is a little bit different. So which will input a number, again, it's quite similar to the previous question, and then print out the number. This is very similar like the previous question. The only difference here is going to be divided. In previous question, it was multiplied. And the syntax will be different for the in case. So we're going to have three options. If the number is less than 6, that number we're inputting it. If it is less than 6, okay, then divide it by 2. And if that number is between 6 and 10, okay, so 6 is included here and 10 is included, then divide it by 5. And if it is any other number that is basically more than 10, so starting from 11 and higher than 11, so just divide it by 10, okay? So let's start to check how we're going to do this. Let's divide it into the three categories. If the number is less than 6, that's going to be divided by 2. And here, 6 itself is not included, so it's going to be 5, 4, 3, 2, and till 0 and negative numbers. Okay? Uh, and then, between 5 and 6, and notice here I, how I am writing it. Okay? Larger than 5 and less than 11. Why? Because I want the 5 to be included, and I want, sorry, I want the 6 to be included, and I want the 10 to be included. 5 and 11 are not included. Unless if you, I put the equal sign larger than and equal to 5 or less than and equal to 11. So anyway, right now this is the way we did it. This category needs to be divided by 5. The last category, which should be any number. So we said here anything less than 6. So and anything more than 5. So f 6, 7, 8, 9 till to 10. So what is left? Left is larger than 10. So whatever is more than 10, not including 10, 10 will be here. So whatever is more than 10 should be divided by 10. That's very simple. If you can logically think of it or write it down in a draft on a draft paper or any a corner of your uh, theory paper. So let's start writing the algorithm right now. So this is the common way. So we're going to start with input and that's the variable we're going to use, the number. Okay. We're going to use the syntax for syntax for case, for in case. It starts with the case word, okay? And then use the variable we're using or we're inputting, and then off. 
So it's case and of are capitalized. Those are predefined words. And then we have the variable in between them. And then we're going to put the options right now. So the first case is if the number, which is this one, if it is more than 10, okay, you can write it down in any way you think it is correct. And it is really should be correct. Okay. So if it is more than 10, the number should be divided by 10 and make sure it's saved in a variable. That variable, you can name it anything else. The same like for these variables. Anything logical makes sense, you can name it. Okay, that's the first case. Second case, if it is more than five. So if it is more than 10, that's the first case. Right now we used it, okay? More than five, that should be also divided by five. Where is this? This is the category, second category, more than five. So that should be divided by uh, five. So the remaining, the remaining obviously should be less than five. We don't really need to write it down. So what, what we can say? Otherwise. Otherwise is the third case which should be dividing the number by two and saving it or storing it in a variable. Okay, this is the way of writing the categories for the case. And then we're going to end the case. And finally, don't forget always to print your result. Okay, there is one thing important here in, the, in this one and the previous one. Let's go to the previous one or uh, let me stay with the case first. I want to show you some of the main things to focus on, which is the capital letters. Capital letters, pay attention to it, okay? Those are the syntax or predefined words. You need to capitalize them, okay? Ignore the x, x is just a variable, so we're just putting it. These are, okay, here you will notice whenever you're using a case, you need to care full of the syntax. So if I'm going to input a number, input it, use the input for it in the capital case, and then case, put the variable, and off. After that, put the variable or whatever you need to input it. Okay, if I'm inputting something more than 10, so just put it's more than 10. You don't need to mention number larger than 10. Okay, and then colon, and then put what is the condition, and repeat all the cases till you reach to the default case. You can call it otherwise and then put the condition. End it and make sure all the case things to be sub-indented over here. And this is the main indentation. And finally, just print your result. The same thing, you need to apply it for all of algorithms. Whenever you're doing, let me go to the previous one. Over here. You can notice, okay, an in input over here that I am having capital here capital for the if capital for the then and capital for else and make sure all of those uh, predefined words are capitalized okay so this is the end of activity 4a let's go for activity 4b in the next video